Good afternoon. My name is Grzegorz Fabiański and I would like to present a talk Uniformization of Regular Relations over by infinite words. This is joint work with Michał Skrzypczak and Szymon Toguńczyk from University of Warsaw. Let me start by defining the terms that you already see in the title, namely what the uniformization is and what the regular relations are. Let's start with uniformization. So we pick two sets, X and Y, and we take some relation R between them. This relation is visualized here by this green subset. And then we say that some another relation F uniform, uniformize R, R, so this uniformization is here visualized by this green line, if three condition holds. So first of all, uniformization have to be a subrelation of R. The second thing, is that this uniformization is a partial function from the x. And the third thing is that these two relations have equal projection to x. So these two last conditions can be equivalently expressed as follows. For each horizontal slice, if, the, if only the slice have non-empty intersection with green set, then this slice contains exactly one red point. And it is easy to see that every relation has some uniformization. So basically for each slice we pick any element. This is exactly what axiom of choice allows you to do. And in fact these two statements are equivalent. And in this talk we are not interested in uniformizations in general, but in regular uniformizations. So we restrict our relation that we want to uniformize to regular relations. So and in fact, we restrict our, ourselves to relations between words and words, or by different meaning of words. So finite words, or infinite words, or by infinite words. And we ask ourselves whether we can find a regular uniformization of it. So this can be interpreted as follows. We check the validity of the axiom of choice, even if we restrict it ourselves only to regular sets. And now I have to explain what I mean by regular relation. I assume that everybody knows what uh, regular language are, but there is no canon definition of regular, defin regular relation. So I will... I choose some language, regular language, over product alphabet, sigma x with sigma y, and then you can think of this any regular language of this form as a relation between words over sigma x and words over sigma y. So, namely, each word over this product alphabet can be seen as a pair of words, one over sigma x and the other one over sigma y. And you can put this pair of words into relation. And the relations you got this way will be called regular relations. So, for example, whenever two words are related by some regular relation, they have to, they need to have the same length. And what is known about regular uniformizations? So the basic thing well known is the fact that if you consider finite words, then every relation admits regular uniformization. And this is easy to prove. So for example, for every input, you can choose the lexicographically smallest matching output. By matching, I mean by related by your given relation. And this being minimally le minimum lexicographically can be easily expressed by MSO logic. And another statement is true for infinite words. So for any regular language of infinite words, you can find regular uniformization. And the proof that I've given you before is not valid now, because lexicographically minimal words cannot exist. But you can do a bit more tricky things to Bichy Automata and prove the same thing. So in this talk, we are interested in just another type of the words, namely by infinite words. But let me explain why we study by infinite words and why we study uniformization in general. So, uniformization is useful because you can, it can be used as a tool. Because over finite or infinite words, everything uniformizes, 
this basically means that you can always be, have some unique definition expressed in MSO logic in, of something that is defined by regular conditions. And this is something you, sometimes useful. The second, thing, the second reason why uniformization is interesting is because this is some kind of the benchmark used to test our understanding of logic expressive power. And the ultimate goal is to understand the uniformization of regular languages over trees. And we are not here, this is a big open problem, but we go with a strategy to look for the simplest structure first. And the case of, of by infinite words is the simplest possible case when there are some languages which admit uniformization, there are some languages which does not admit uniformization, so this is the case for infinite trees. And it is not known how to characterize this one which admits uniformization. So what we proved? We consider the following decision problem. We are given as an input a regular relation over by infinite words. Uh, so here you have to pick your favorite representation of regular relations by automat and algebra and what do you want. And we ask ourselves a question whether, are, whether a given relation admits a regular uniformization. And we proved that this problem is decidable. And moreover, we found a nice characterization of it. So, namely an algebraic characterization. You build a syntactic monoid for this relation R, and then you check some algebraic conditions. And in the rest of the talk, I don't want to talk about any algebra or equations or anything like that. I want you to give you a feel how this uniformization problem works and why this problem is more deeper than you can see at first. So I will give you a bunch of examples with increasing level of complication. So let's start with something very simple. We pick one letter input alphabet, so there is only one input word, and we take two letter output alphabet, and we consider the following relation. So input and output are related, if and only if the output have alternating x's and y's. So note that there are exactly two elements in relation R, this pair, and the pair shifted by one. And this relation doesn't admit regular uniformization. And let's see why. So, first observation is that if there is any regular uniformization, then this regular uniformization is simultaneously a shift invariant uniformization. Just because every regular language has to be shift invariant. So you shift simultaneously the input and the output. And for this language, you cannot pick even a shift invariant uniformization. And why? Because you have to pick some output for this A on the A input. And if you pick, for example, the first pair, the first pair for the R, you also have to pick the another one because you have to be shift invariant. But now you break the functionality. You pick two out two outputs for single input. Yeah, so we cannot do this in Shift in the shift invariant way. And let's complicate this example a bit. So now we use two letter input alphabet and we have the same two letter output alphabet. And now we add additional condition. So words U and W are related if and only if. The second condition you are already familiar with W have alternating X's and Y's. But you now have to be of the special form. So from the beginning there are A's, and then A stops, and from this point there are only B's. And now this relation can be uniformized. So we can, for example, do it as follows. In MSO we can require two things. At position with last A, you have to put X in the output, and moreover in output you have to alternate X's and Y's. And in this way, for each input you define exactly one output. And the phenomenon you can see here is a more general one. So 
whenever the input words have some distinguished position, you can use this position to every uniformize everything you want. So basically, because on single, single infinite word, everything uniformizes, you can use this distinguished position from the input word to split your by infinite word to, to finite words and uniformize them independently. So yeah, this is something important. Defining a position in the input means uniformizing everything. So if you work with these examples and a bit more complicated ones, you can come to a nice hypothesis. So maybe the shift invariant is the only abstraction to uniformization. Because whenever you find some language which does, uh, doesn't admit any uniformization, then you try to prove it and finally you find some problem with shifts. So maybe this is a general thing. So let's make this hypothesis a bit more formal. So we fix some re regular relation R and we ask ourselves whether this relation R admits a shift invariant to uniform uniformization if and only if it admits regular uniformization. And what's interesting is that this hypothesis is false. So there are some relations which does not admit regular uniformization. You cannot pick output unif using regular expressive power, but there is a possible to pick this output in a shift invariant way. So non-regularity have to come from different reason than just being incom than just being incompatible with shifts. Yeah, this relation is compatible with shifts, but anyway, does not have regular uniformization. And now I want you to present, I believe, the smallest possible example of regular language with this property. And this language is definitely not trivial. So let's see it. So first of all, we have to define input alphabet. And the input alphabet looks like this. So we already can see that this input alphabet is a more complicated than what we see seen before. So there are four functions on six elements which form the input alphabets. So these are four symbols, four, le four letters. And if you look for these functions, for the moment you can see that whenever you compose any of these two functions, you will get another one. So for example, when you compose the second and the third, you got the fourth. So these four functions form a group. This is four element group, isomorphic to Z2 times Z2. So yeah, but this element corresponds to a group, but we treat these group elements just as input letters. And now I have to define the output alphabet. And the output alphabet will consist of just a single letter. So now I will tell you about the language, a uh, relation that we want to uniformize. So we have some input word, and we want, and in this picture, you can see six blue paths. So for every input word, you can see six by infinite paths, blue paths. And you want in a uniform way to pick one of them. So we say that input word matches with output word with two conditions as it satisfies. So first of all, this red arrows from the by infinite path. And moreover, this is one of the paths from the input. So we can find this red path here. So this part of by infinite words are in relation that we want to uniformize. And it turns out that this relation does not admit any regular uniformization, but simultaneously it has some shift invariant uniformization. And this situation is the crux of the stability result. So namely, what our algebraic conditions allow us to say, it gives some formal way to find situations like this in any regular language and say that at languages have uniformization in situation like this does not happen. And there are some shift compatibility conditions. Let me talk about this example a bit more. So I already presented you a example of simple relation with two elements, this A's and where you only have single letter input alphabet and this alternating axis and Y's. And this language is somehow connected to our more complicated example. When you, for example, pick a different functions, like 
you pick a single function, like swapping two elements. Then you have single input word that is already visualized here, and you have to pick one of these two paths. So this is the first path you can pick, and the second path is just shifted. And this is exactly the example that we already seen, right? So this A corresponds this to this two crossing blue arrows, X is red arrow pointing upwards and y is red arrow pointing pointing down and we proved which was really easy that we cannot pick in a shift invariant way any of these two blue paths so why this problem of shift invariance doesn't happen in our counter example so let's take some input words where we repeat one element infinitely many times and now we have to pick some blue paths and we already know that we cannot pick the this, any of these first two blue paths or any of these blue paths in the middle in a shifting one way. But there are two additional constant blue paths below, and we can pick any of them, and we can do it in shifting variant way. And here we use the fact that each input letter have a fixed point. Yeah, and this is a crucial thing, and this is important to have a shifting variant uniformization in this particular language. So this is why this example looks like this. We have to find some small non-cyclic group and then find some representation of it such that every element have a pixel and yeah, then we can build an example like this. And Z2 is, times Z2 is one of the smallest group and we believe that this reputation of six elements is probably one of the smallest ones. Okay, and and the one I want you to change the topic a bit. I don't want to talk about yeah some uniformization examples, but I want to present you some interesting lemma that we developed during the proof. And the lemma that I believe is in the interesting console. So let me remind you about Gamzee factorization. We fix a uh, some monoid M. We take some by infinite words where each letter is from this monoid M, and by factorization of by infinite words, we mean splitting this word into finite parts. So we split this by infinite words into infinitely many finite parts, just like in the picture. And the splitting gives you some factors, and because letters are taken from the monoid, you can compute the product of each factor in that monoid M. And in this way, you got a infinite by infinite sequence of products of factors. And we say that some factorization is a Gamzee factorization if the sequence of these factors from the sequence of the special form. So namely, there are from the beginning there is, then there is a single different element X, and there are Fs, when E and Fs are either potent. So this condition says that e square is equal e and f square is equal f. Some algebraic condition on that. And what is really important is that well-known theorem says that for every word there exists some Gamzee factorization of it. So we can look to this as the uniformization problem. The input is this word over monoid m. There are some factorizations which are Ramsey factorizations, and we want to pick up a Ramsey factorizations in a uniform way. Okay, so how to formalize this? We have we need some output alphabet. So we take two letters output alphabet, one letter is a dash, and the second letter is the corner, and these corners mark the position of the splitting. And we take the relation such that the word X is related to Y if two conditions hold. So first of all, why this output word defines a factorization, so there are infinitely many corners on the left and infinitely many corners on the right. And yeah, and this factorization is a Gramsci factorization. And yeah, MSO can easily compute the products of each factor. So this is the instance of the uniformization problem, quite a general one. And we can ask ourselves a question, whether this for every monoid, maybe this admits uniformization. This is not true. And for example, if we pick this monoid M to be equal to group Z2 and input words with only ones, 
then this have two smallest possible Ramsey factorizations shifted by one, you, as you can already see in the picture, and you cannot pick any of them in the uniform way because you have problem with shift invariance. Yeah, so there is a stupid reason why you cannot in uniform way pick a Ramsey factorization. But yeah, maybe you can work around this problem. So you relax the conditions that you want, what you want to achieve a bit, and you hope that maybe you can almost, in uniform way, define a Ramsey factorization. So let's relax our requirements. So we have the second possibility that we defined a trivial factorization. And by trivial, I mean that each factor evaluates to the same element in modern time. And you have to be prepared for this situation, right? Because your input word have be have contains only the single letter, and then you have, and then you will struggle to define a Ramsey factorization. Okay. And what now? Maybe th that's enough. Maybe now, for every modern term, this graph regular uniformization. And this is not true. And now we have to consider. For ex much more complicated counterexample. For example, if you take this counterexample that I given you a few slides before and take monoid for it, then you will have the counterexample for this hypothesis that this relation are always have uniformization. So you have to relax even more. So we add the third possibility that we define a factorization so that each factor belongs to a common subgroup of M. So there are some groups elements in any monoid, elements that belong to some subgroup in that monoid, but here we define more. So we can find one particular group inside M and then find a factorization such as each, each factor, product of each factor belongs to this chosen particular group in M. And this is something that you have to be prepared for anyway because maybe your input world only use elements from a, some group of from the monoid M. And then you can, then yeah, it's easy to see. Ah, not so easy, but you can see that then you cannot do anything. Okay, so we have such a relaxed way of defining Ramsey factorization. So we can define Ramsey factorization exactly. We can define some trivial factorization, and maybe we define a factorization up to the group, right? So each element is from the same group, but they are not idempotent. Yeah, and now it is true that this relation are Alvin's uniformization for every monoidal. And this is a powerful tool, which allows us in the proof to, to give the uniformization for every language which satisfies our criteria. And I think this is something interesting in its own. For example, when you consider aperiodic monoids or so languages expressible in definable in first order logic, then you get rid of the third case because they are not in any non trivial groups in them and you just have to deal with two third yeah, with the cases second and second and first. And moreover then you can find a new formization which is also expressible in first order logic. Yeah, so this is some nice lemma. So to sum up, uniformization for by infinite words. Is this a double? Allow some algebraic criterion. And moreover, the much deeper abstraction for heavy uniformization than just some problem with shift invariance. Thank you for your attention.